Some of you who have been journeying with us for some time know that I preach in a message series that goes from a few weeks to six weeks. The last message series I had a great deal of trouble determining what to actually call it and I talked about it with a family at an evening meal back on Australia Day and I came up later with the thought we are God's work of art. But at the same meal one of the daughters was sitting there and she has uh, quite a deal to do with various uh, Christian leaders around Tasmania and visits various churches regularly. She had, as uh, she said, a, a question that she would like somebody to preach on. And she said it came out of the COVID experience. She said, I'd like to pick somebody to preach a series that asks the question, what do you do when God isn't in the place where you left him? That was about COVID and about the challenge that suddenly people weren't able to go to church anymore. And because of all the uh, different challenges that arose out of that, I, was, I admitted I was fascinated and I started to think about it in the light of the Easter readings. And there will be a number of occasions during this Easter season when that kind of question sits in the mind of those who are Christ followers, the early Christian community. So the theme I've chosen for this series is what do you do when God isn't in the place where you left him? One of the things about the Easter vigil last night and then Easter day is that what we celebrate is anything but ordinary. Now, if you want to define ordinary, you can find it or something like no special quality or interest. It's unexceptional. In the normal or the customary way of doing something, there are times when we like ordinary and times when we don't. Having normal in our life can give us a sense of stability and peace. And even if some of our ordinary and normal practices are not working for us, most of us are so attached to them we find it very difficult to change. But on the other hand, ordinary can become incredibly boring or monotonous. Now Easter is about the celebration of something extraordinary, something that saves us from the ordinary. When normal wasn't working for the world, God decided to do something extraordinary, something that hadn't been done before. God saw the ordinary practices of most people were leading them into a dead end. And so he did the extraordinary. He sent his son into the world. Now Jesus lived on the earth for 33 years, spending most of the first 30 living an ordinary life. But then he began his public ministry. He taught like no one had ever taught. He lived like no one had ever lived. And he loved like no one had ever loved. And he had insights into life that people had never really had before. He told stories that forced people to challenge their assumptions about God and how life worked. He had an ability to attract crowds, as most good leaders do. He could speak with the most educated, as well as the people who were on the periphery of society. People who were nothing like Jesus liked him, and they wanted to be around him because there was something extraordinary about him. People met him and they wondered or were amazed by him. Some walked away after meeting Jesus healed of their diseases, but also healed in their hearts. And they were convinced that this might be the Messiah, the Son of God. However, many of the religious leaders of the day became incredibly angry with him when they met him, so they collaborated to kill him. But no one walked away after meeting Jesus, thinking he was simply ordinary. 
Then Jesus did something even more extraordinary. To show he was who he said he was, and to help us break out of the ordinary, he allowed himself to be beaten and whipped and then nailed to the cross. He allowed himself to look completely foolish and to look like he had lost. But then three days later, he rose from the dead and conquered the grave, and we celebrate Easter. Because Easter is about the celebration of the most extraordinary event in history, the resurrection. The power that Jesus had as the by grace of God raising him from the dead is also available to you and to me. And here's the great thing about God's plan. Access to Jesus and his power doesn't come from anything extraordinary. Believing in Jesus and his resurrection doesn't often come about from extraordinary experiences. It comes about through the ordinary circumstances and practices of our life and our faith. As we listen to the Gospel of John today, we heard how Mary Magdalene came to the tomb to complete the ritual, something quite ordinary. But something extraordinary then happens. The tomb is empty. And so they begin to ask the question, what do we do when we find that Jesus isn't where we left him? Then they hear the story about the young man who's there, the angel, and his message to the disciples. And they're told he is risen. Peter and John and Mary then go back and start to talk to the other disciples. And so a new journey for God's people begins. Out of darkness, we come into the light and we come into life. So Easter is about the celebration of the most extraordinary event in history that has the power to change our ordinary lives with seemingly ordinary methods. We see this in what happens to the disciples, those who followed Jesus. When he was crucified, his closest followers ran away from him. Peter denied even knowing Jesus right before his crucifixion. And at the time of the resurrection, they were actually hiding in rooms, scared to death that the same thing might happen to them. But together with the women who followed and supported Jesus in his ministry, these ordinary people went on to do extraordinary things. They encountered the risen Christ and came to believe in him and their lives were changed and transformed. Suddenly they began boldly preaching about Jesus and his resurrection. Peter's that God started using them to heal people. And eventually this group of people turned the world upside down so that 2,000 years later, we are here celebrating the resurrection. Now along the way, these ordinary people answered for themselves the question, what do you do when God isn't in the place where you left him? because they found him amongst the people whose lives were changed by the power of the Holy Spirit who came into the church, the people of God, and who called them to be Christ followers. Now we too can access that extraordinary power of Jesus through some very ordinary practices. We do it through prayer, through times of silence, through reading the scriptures, through serving our community. What we celebrate today is how this most extraordinary event in history has the power to change our ordinary lives. But what we do with this grace, this grace we receive today, will be our gift to our loving and merciful God, who has made us in his image and in his likeness, and he calls us to be his work of art.